Hey guys, Simply Rocco here, and right now we're going to have a special edition of uh, our talk show. Our special guest will be Alex Hillman from Crypto Kings. He's going to talk to us about how to get set up with crypto, uh, talk a little bit about how the uh, markets are, how to uh, buy into crypto, store it, uh, keep it safe, what to do and what not to do. So stay tuned, guys. Don't go anywhere. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of Simply Rocco's Talk Show. Today we have Alex Hillman, a.k.a. Uh -huh. Good Guy Biker, a.k.a. Incredible Mining Guru Wizard. Alex, why don't you in introduce yourself to everybody here? Oh, hey, well, first off, uh, for everyone watching my audience, Peter's audience, I know Peter way back. We used to stream together. Peter was a supporter of my channel. We used to game a lot together, and Peter was one of those guys killing it on the uh, on the social media live stream and stuff. So I'm, I'm glad to be here doing more of that kind of stuff with you, Peter. It's been too long. Um, I'm so happy to be here. Guys, if you haven't, make sure you follow all of Peter's stuff because uh, definitely worthy <laughs> of doing so. Um, so, yeah, my name's Alex. Uh, I'm half of uh, the all the Bitcoin and, and, and Ethereum and all the cryptocurrency stuff you're going to hear about. My other half is Spencer. He and I kind of went into business in uh, early 2017 in the space, uh, and we've just had incredible results. It's been life changing for both of us, and we we try to encourage everybody with uh, like outreach and free information to how how to use the same stuff that we did to make that happen for themselves. And that's all open source software and free programs, and you know teaching people how to line up and and sign up on the websites to get the cards at the inexpensive prices, all that stuff that's really hard for people to do. Um, we help make it really easy for them. Um, and, and we love it. I, I love seeing people thrive. I want all my friends to have, uh, you know, fast motorcycles, cigar boats, and private jets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, uh, you actually helped me get set up too uh, with uh, mining. You got, you actually sold me, sold me uh, my still original miner, which I still have still running. I, only only upgrade I've had to do is uh, the uh, graphics card. That's about it, and that's all I can, you know, do at the moment. But who no, knows? Eventually, true. eventually, that's still gonna. But I mean, I've made I, I've done pretty good with it so far. Yeah, you know? and if you if you still got those coins, what you want to do? So a lot of the machines we sold in like uh, December, January, they've all ROI already this year, right? It took them mm -hmm. about six months with these new generations of cards. Spencer and I, we're still running cards from five six years ago. And Spencer won't let me stop. He's just he it's 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 funny like that. So we've had the chance to return on investment from like our graphics cards so many times. But what mm -hmm. we haven't done is we haven't sold yet, even in that whole four years again, uh, because we're in kind of a parabolic bull run right now, which means all these coins we've mined, all the Bitcoin, all these altcoins, they're about to run in value uh, a, a lot at the end of kind of this four year cycle. The happening just happened in April. Uh, that's where the the block reward for Bitcoin goes down. It halves every four years. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of that reward that's given to people to do the security on Bitcoin. So that that just happened, and now everyone's kind of reacting to that liquidity, uh, liquidity crunch. There's a, a drain in liquidity. You know, they go from making you know sixteen hundred bitcoins a day to nine hundred bitcoins a day to four hundred bitcoins a day, and the, this is a big change for these miners and these different people that are needing to buy these coins from these miners to sell them on their exchanges. So uh, I think we're in for like a real liquidity squeeze. So if you still got some of those coins, Peter, I know I still got some of mine as well. You want to make sure they're safe in a hardware wallet and get ready yeah. to uh, send them off to somewhere like uh, Kraken or one of the other exchanges to turn them into fiat because um, – we're we're probably approaching the top of a four year cycle, so your coins are probably going to be a lot more valuable than they are now, very very soon, which is really cool. Um, and then what we do normally when we hit the top of these cycles, because we've done it a few times, just personally and as a business, we actually just buy more cards. So we just fill our house with amazing computers. We mm -hmm. fill we fill our our friends' warehouses with amazing computers. We <laughs> we do everything we can to not like pay for our own warehouse. And then eventually we just rent a storage unit or warehouse and fill it with computers too. And that's kind of been how we've been doing it. We just keep throwing 
the the profits inside of a business that we're making from these cards back mm -hmm. into buying more cards to increase our capacity. Right. Well, let me answer you a couple of questions. Like for I get a lot of questions. Oh, how do I start? Where do I go? Um what do I do like as far as buying? Because a lot of the questions I get is more like towards purchasing or, you know, buying into crypto because uh, people, you know, a lot of people don't know how to start mining or it, it gets a little overwhelming because I kind of, you know, I kind of refer them to the information that you have, but it's not always there. Like right now I have you available. So uh, why don't you go into a little bit like say if somebody wants to go and start maybe investing. I, I don't want to say investing in, in crypto because because it's not really an investment. It's it's actual currency. It's not an investment. This is where a lot of people are getting confused about this. So totally. how would someone start if they wanted to build maybe something like a retirement fund out of this or or if they wanted to. Well, well let's start with that. Let's start with that. Where yeah. would they go? What would they what's. Because there's a lot of exchanges out there. Before before any of that, I think people need to have their their um, their expectations set correctly. Because if you put any substantial amounts of money into any type of investment and you don't have the appropriate mindset and the mm -hmm. appropriate exit strategies, um, you might have to position out of that investment at a at a a, a, a not beneficial period. If there was an accident, a financial crisis, if something happened, you know, and you needed that liquidity, it could put you in a really bad place. So before we talk about that, which I, I will talk about real quick, I just want to make sure people understand what this kind of space represents. Bitcoin itself is a is a store of value that's decentralized. So it's similar to like storing your money in something like a house or a stock or in art. Right. It's it's mm -hmm. it's not physically tangible in a sense that you can go hold it or live inside of it, but it's digitally tangible in that it's proven through code. And that's hard for a lot of people to understand. But due to the decentralization, the distribution and the evolution of Bitcoin what's, and the adoption, even Bitcoin represents a safe asset that is kind of hedged against things like the U.S. dollar. It's hedged against some of these other the gold store idea store of value. Um, it's hedged against certain things like money remittance and the transfer of wealth and money laundering and all sorts of other things. You know, people used to buy all their drugs with them back in the very mm. beginning. It's certainly right. matured a lot since then. But but it's been proven as this 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 store of value, this money technology that can't be fucked with, right? It literally right. can't be messed with. And because of that, now it's being wider, wider adopted, not just by the, the criminals, right? Now every now the bankers and the companies are adopting, and Elon Musk and Michael Saylor and all these guys are getting into the marketplace. So if if you if you're buying something like Bitcoin because of its scale and because of its security, because of that scale, it is it is de-risking, in my opinion. You're lowering your risk versus holding a currency like the U.S. dollar that's being inflated, right? They're printing, printing, right. printing, printing. Yeah, exactly. And and when when the government prints money, what ends up happening is you're they're taking your time from you. They're stealing time. You go to work, or your family went to work, and they made this money for you, and then the government prints, 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 and they dilute that time. All that time you saved up becomes worth less. You can do less with it. And, and that's really, really bad. And it's tough for an average person to beat inflation. You know, if you're a sophisticated investor, if you've got millions of dollars, if, if, you've, if you've been lucky enough to get into Bitcoin, you know, this early, right? Today is still very early. Mm -hmm. Then you're, you're able to get an edge over a lot of the other people in your life. But th to have a million dollars to put into these types of funds or to be able to go buy a $3,000 video card for your computer and, and then have mm -hmm. the time to learn how to do that. You know, these not everybody has that luxury right now, which is unfortunate. Uh, but 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 cryptocurrency has flattened that. You don't need to be have a million dollars. You don't need to know somebody. You don't need to have uh, access to, you know, prestigious information before that art hits the market. It, it, you don't need to play these games anymore. Um, okay. You can simply get access to something like Bitcoin and hold it like those gen those those wealthy people you know the one thing that's common with all wealthy people across all credence all colors all religions all time periods in history the one common thing with 
with generational wealth and its creation is is holding pristine assets for mm -hmm. long periods of times. And this used to look like property. This used to look like mines, right? Physical, physical right. things. It looks used to look like art. And you would hold these things for long periods, and that would increase the generational wealth of your family. Well, we have the ability to do that now with cryptocurrency, right? We can hold these Bitcoins for long periods of time. And, and some would argue this is an incredibly pristine, if not the most pristine asset, more pristine than a house that can be taken from you or burned down, more pristine than stocks or money in a bank that can be seized by a government, can be locked up, can be compelled. Your exchanges can be compelled to give that information. You know, th this whole idea of Bitcoin also comes with the idea of self-sovereignty. So the idea of holding these coins in your own possession. And yes. so I make this joke about being able to get on your jet ski with all your money and jet ski away, you know, and and it, it, that's a joke here in first world countries. But as Peter knows, who's, who's well traveled around the world and, you know, he has family from overseas. And, you know, so these you 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 see that the government or you see that cartels or you see that criminals can people can be in all sorts of different at risk situations. You know, if you're in an, ab yeah. an abusive relationship. Maybe it's not safe to have cash in your home, right? Maybe if you're in a if you're in a foster home, for example, and, and there's dozens of people sharing rooms with you, you maybe is in a situation where you have the ability to store wealth and collect wealth and to get yourself right. into an improved situation because of the hostile situation that you're in. You know, I talk about these these people who are fleeing these regions of conflict with their bedpost on their back while they're crossing rivers. And they're getting beat up on both sides of the river by borders, different border security, stealing all of their assets. Right. And that's the world that we live in. So it's those people, this blockchain, this Bitcoin stuff is incredibly powerful because they can put their money into a 24 word or onto a USB stick or a hardware wallet. Or they can remember the words if they want to really be sneaky about it. And they can flee with all of their personal wealth. Right. You can tra I, I could transfer everything to you in an emergency. I could just say, Peter, here it is, right? I, I got to go to three different locations. I use multi-sig, but I could accomplish that with, with, uh, with help. So the, the, I couldn't do that with my stocks or my other investments. I can't just call the bank and say, send everything to Peter. You know, um, That's something that's different. Okay, so there is another side of that. Bitcoin is decentralized enough, it's secure enough that it's a really secure asset. So when I say it's de-risked, I say that because government has adopted it, corporations are adopting it, sovereign funds are adopting it, countries are adopting it. I say it because it is absolutely de-risked. You could, you could use it all over the world in all sorts of ways. On the flip side of that, everything other than Bitcoin is nowhere near as secure. Is, is nowhere near as decentralized. Most of these products are very centralized. Centralized like Amazon. Centralized like your bank. They're centralized yeah, yeah. like Visa, right? And that might help make things faster and cheaper, but that makes things centralized and, and, and <coughs> far more risky. So by giving your, your, your unregulated money, because this is a heavily unregulated Wild West space right now, by giving your money to anyone in this space that's heavily unregulated, you're far more likely to encounter all sorts of problems like Ponzi schemes and, and scams and phishing and just these and, and, and viruses that are trying to take your money from you. Like this yeah, stuff is yeah. common because it's the Wild West. This is heavily unregulated. So when you go away from Bitcoin, understand you're 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 risking up. Now your potential in the short term, if you're if you are lucky or you know what you're doing, perhaps you can beat Bitcoin and then appreciate more. But understand, Bitcoin is de-risking the U.S. It's a hedge against the U.S. dollar. A lot of these other things are are we call them the shitcoin casinos, right? Because they're they're very risky. They're more risky. There's thousands of percent of risk. The upside is very large sometimes, but the but you can literally go to zero. And there's no one you can go to, right? They'll just laugh at you. They'll be like, bro, you gave your money to crypto dick pick uh token 101. And 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 yeah, I was gonna I was gonna breed it and get a frog token uh lizard guy, and then they're just gonna be like, We can't help you, right? We there's yeah. we don't have legal precedent for this stuff yet. So 
But there's lots of, but regardless, there's a ton of money to be made. And we're at the end of a four-year cycle. So the most amount of, um, the, if you're trying to make the most return in a, in a shortest period of time, right now is actually that time. Like it, it, if you were to try and maximize the amount of time you spent in a four-year cycle to get the maximum amount of return, it would be buying in October, November. Because every time these four-year cycles happen, if you look at Bitcoin, the value goes up dramatically at the end of that year, just after that happening that we talked about opening. Mm -hmm. So if you were to buy any Bitcoin or a lot of these other coins today, you could see dramatic returns in the next three to four months. Uh, like, I mean, literally... People are not anticipating how high Bitcoin could go here in the next few months. People are like, oh, it's going to break 100K. I'm looking like 300K might be conservative. Right? Yeah. 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 And, and, and right now. yeah. So so this is, uh, this is a really interesting time. We normally see like a 600% return in like a one-year period, 6,800% return in that last year. And we see the most of that value incurred in a two-week period out of a four-year period. And in that two-week period, we see the most of that value, the majority of that value, in a 48-hour period. So in reality, we haven't reached that two-week or that 48-hour period, whatever it's going to be. If it goes past 100, if it goes past 300K, if it goes past a million, we're not there yet. So by getting in now in any way, you're front-running this insane thing that's about to happen. And I'm, I, I am staking millions of dollars on this i am staking hundreds of thousands of dollars of my assets on this like my computers right mm -hmm. i am staking my reputation on this i am publicly announcing these things and have been for four years coming up to this moment right and i'm also like financially positioning myself to make moves really quick here in the next four months so even though i've got all these bitcoins and we mine ethereum and we do this stuff i have been buying Bitcoin every single day. Okay, so how do you do that as a new person? Well, we talked about what makes it different is it can't be seized, right? Mm -hmm. At the top of these markets, a lot of bad things happen. These websites go away. These CEOs boat away with billions of dollars because, you know, these millions become billions and they just look at it and say, okay, I'm gone. Binance. Yeah, Binance. <laughs> nice hash, well, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. So, so what you need to do is you need to sign up with a reputable exchange, okay? And a reputable exchange is normally one that works with regulators and follows the, the money service provider rule sets and will do KYC, know your customer. This is the safest way for people to approach this market. I, you know, there's a lot of ways to go no KYC, no identification. Mm. That has other purposes, but most people aren't sophisticated enough to, to trick people if they ever make a substantial amount of money, you know, they don't have sophisticated money laundering systems. So I don't encourage it, you know, right. because when you go buy that nice car, they're going to come asking you how you did it and you're going to get whacked. Right. Yeah, exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. So what, the right way to do it is do it legally and do these tax structures that we can talk about that save you tons of money. So you can pay this stuff out to yourself as a salary instead of pay capital gains in, on these things. So there's a lot of ways to approach this space. You got to be really smart. Um, but the smarter you are, the more money you make and the more fun you can have with that money, right? The more just like go create, go buy a castle, you know, because no, you, you, you can prove it's your money. And that's the important yeah, yeah. part because I'm buying a right. fucking castle. And I think Peter probably will too. It might be a different <laughs> well, kind of castle, but we're buying I, if, some castles. If I can uh, get enough out of it, let's see. I got to get more cards and more uh, miners before I do that. That's it. So, that's all I do. I just buy more yeah. of that stuff. So, so when we think it, when we think of buying it, we're lo looking at a registered exchange, an exchange that's going to want our identification, something that's going to use something like two-factor authentication. So, to me, the best option, in my opinion, really, is something like Kraken, Kraken.com, and this is both in the U.S. And, and Canada. I think they're not able to operate in like New York State and a few other places. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. If for any New yeah. Yorkers that are watching, yeah, Kraken is not an option for us. Unfortunately, yes. so uh, as a matter of fact, that's not just cracking too. Um, I think several exchanges are kind of blacklisted in New York because yeah, it's the, the bit uh, there. The, the attorney general's got something up her ass about it. I don't know. Yeah, actually, the guy left, and the the guy who passed the legislation and the government there is mm -hmm. now left, and he's like a director of Coinbase. Go figure. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> and guess who got I the, didn't know that. I did not the know first that. License. Guess who got the first license while he was still in government? <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> the bit the bit the bit national, the bit pay license. It's it's really it's funny. It's good, but it's also not good. It raises the barrier for companies to enter too high. But that was yeah. the intent. And then he went to, you know, the company that had the barrier set. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's, this is government. It's perverse. It's gross. But you have to appreciate it, right? These are these, yeah. these, are these uh, constant forces that affect markets that we, we don't want to talk about, but we have to look at, right? Mm -hmm. personal, personal interest. That's what people are here for. So in personal interest, we don't want to leave our money in these exchanges. So we sign up for something like Kraken. If you're in New York, like, you know, if you want to keep it really simple, in Canada, we've got this thing called ShakePay. And if you yeah. message me on Twitter, I can get you 30 bucks for free using that. And the equivalent of that in the U.S. is something like Cash App, right? And these apps will let you just send money to there really easily. And you'll be able to buy Bitcoin and leave it on your phone. Mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't leave it on the phone. Because it's it's not as safe as putting it in one of these hardware wallets, right? But you can get there. You just buy a little buy buy a hundred bucks today, right? And just see what happens. Uh, it's likely that hundred bucks is going to triple here really quick. You got enough money then to to justify buying a hardware wallet. So mm -hmm. so you, you get onto an exchange, you register, Kraken.com, ShakePay, uh, Cash App. These are two apps you can download on your phone. You make sure they're like legit, and then uh, you start buying some Bitcoin that way. Um, mm -hmm. Now what you can do is you can trade that into other coins. So you can buy Ethereum, you can buy Uniswap, you can buy Zero X, or you know you can buy Ravencoin. There's lots of other things you can buy if you want to ramp up your risk. But what I encourage most people to do is get get as much Bitcoin as they can, and then mm -hmm. put that into a hardware wallet. The other one that we really like is Ethereum. We make we make a ton of money from Ethereum. Generally speaking, it's made more money over the last year than Bitcoin. Uh, uh, and the last two and three years. So mining it or buying it would have been, you know, a little more profitable. Yeah. And this is what we're doing. We're trying to get as much money as we can into this blockchain space, into these more sound projects. And Ethereum represents a fairly sound project as well in that there's a lot of development. Technologically, it's inferior to Bitcoin. And technologically, most other projects are inferior to Ethereum. But there's a lot of development and invested interest. So it continues to be upgraded on a regular basis. And there's a lot of cool things you can do on there. So it's something that we have a lot of as well uh, outside of Bitcoin. Uh, but yeah, so you buy it on your exchange. Uh, you, you Wire transferring is normally going to be the cheapest way to deposit money at the exchange. Uh, Coinbase is another one. You know, We don't really love that one. But it's Kraken and Coinbase have these pro versions, which have less fees. So when you're using these exchanges, see if they have a pro version or an advanced version. Because often, if you were to change your fiat dollars, your government money, into Bitcoin or these other coins, it's cheaper on the pro. So, so pay attention to that because that'll save you. I didn't know that because I, I have them both, and I've only been using just a regular Coinbase. Um, yeah. just, just to throw stuff you know in there, and then later on, it, once it – you know. That's where I just put a little bit of money in, and then if I needed it, I would take it out. Like I had to do that a couple week, like a week ago, um, just just to, like to have it on the side. And then once these things came up, I just pulled it out because I needed to. I had an emergency, so I had to use that. My main stuff, not even on it's it's on a, it's on a hardware wallet. You got you know that already. That's that's basically I tell people that's the key. Keep most, if not everything, on a hardware wallet. Unless you if you want to have a little bit on an exchange. Just, just in case is emergency. Well, I would, you say, I would say not more than a hundred bucks. Yeah, you can send to the exchange, right? You just plug yeah. your hardware wallet into your computer. You send some money to your exchange. You turn it back into fiat and deposit mm -hmm. that in your account. You know, okay. and I think everyone should do that at least once as well. They should try to withdraw ten bucks, a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks at least once, so yeah. that when these things go way up in value. You know the process. You know your identification and, and verification from the exchange is all done. And you know your bank's going to accept money transfers from this place. Because you're going to, all of a sudden, you're going to have huge sums of money and you're just going to be depositing like tens of thousands, if not millions of dollars into your bank account. And everyone's going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bank should be like, oh, where did this come from? Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. That, that's <laughs> another point. That, yeah, that was one thing I wanted to, to bring up too. Like, say, um, now, if you decide to transfer from your hardware wallet to an exchange, um, yeah, obviously some flags are, are going to come up now because of current you know, 
the regulations are changing to get everything reported now. So that's mm-hmm. another thing to, to be mindful of too. If see, like what if somebody actually wanted to do, Hey, I wanted to buy a million dollar home and I wanted to cash in some Bitcoin, you know, they're going to pay a lot of taxes on that depending on what they're going to, you know, that's, that's the, the downside of it, unfortunately, because now the government wants their peace. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah so, and so we, what we do is here in Canada, we have a business and we hold the bitcoins because they're made by the best business inside of it as an asset mm-hmm. and then we de- depreciate against that like the depreciation of our equipment mm-hmm. uh, the power consumption so every year we can write off 15 percent for the first four years of those machines we mm-hmm. can uh we can write off all the power and internet connection the the square mm-hmm. footage of the places where they operate are some of our time when we're actually mm-hmm. working on those machines you know right. all sorts of stuff and so we accumulate what things that would be part of normal operation business costs if you were doing this at home or as a business right you'd have to pay your power you have to pay your internet you have to pay where the machines you have to pay rent somewhere yeah you yeah. have to live somewhere mm-hmm. so but the difference is now you're you're turning the cryptocurrency from a capital gain into an asset inside of a business and you're able to write off all of those things against the profits of that so uh, and then in the end you, you could pay yourself a salary if you're not right so if you're if you're making a lot of money and the, you've got these bitcoins inside this business you can mm-hmm. you can turn those into income and, and use those as a salary for yourself as well get, of course you have to account for all these things properly and you need an account to do that for you yeah yeah use, that's use where it gets a little complicated for people and they don't understand that yeah but use your local regional guidelines right like all it's state by state if you google you know your state in the cryptocurrency guidelines there's going to be something uh from a federal level or or, or more likely from a a a regional level and just follow that stuff to your best ability um and get some help most accountants and things aren't going to be as familiar with this space so what you want to do is you want to look at just getting on call with someone who's an expert so like anyone who's advertising themselves, you know, as a crypto accountant or Bitcoin accountant or these people who are, have experience with this or better regional offices, right? You know, you know, you got 150 different people who deal with taxes working for Desjardins and these different types of companies, Equifax. And you want to look at them and be like, is do you have people that specialize in this? And then just get those people on call for consultation and uh, yeah. they'll give you a lot of information really quick. Yeah, but region regional accountants are usually going to be better than local accountants for this type of stuff. If that makes sense, state state yeah. state firms. For someone like myself, like I'm just one person, small, you know, whatever, just doing mining on the side. How would you suggest like uh, they would start mining? I mean, obviously, I would I would refer them over to you to get the equipment because you do ship worldwide. Um, I guess I guess it would depend on their budget, what they're willing to to do, spend. Yeah. So um, actually, don't spend anything. I got this video here. Uh, screen sharing is not allowed. Maybe I'll send it to you. Uh, wait, it it's not. It should be. It should no be worries. No worries. Oh, I'm gonna send it to chat here. Automatically screen Maybe sharing. You, yeah, you should be able it. to screen share. No, nope, let's help. Screen uh, share. Unable to share the screen. Not allowed. No worries, though, brother. I've got yeah. uh, I've got a video um, called "Is Mining Cryptocurrency at Home Still Profitable in 2021?" Mm-hmm. And bonus tip: How to buy GPU cards. And uh, in that video, I talk about how to get cards at retail cost, how to how to sign up on the raffles on the on the manufacturers' websites at evga.com and msi.com. So that way, you can try to avoid paying all that markup that the that people are charging right now. Yeah. Um, but I encourage people to use literally any computer that they've got at home that's a desktop. So it, it, the laptops have a hard time with the cooling, right? They're not really designed to be run 24-7 and to be under mm-hmm. load like that. Uh, mm-hmm. So I don't encourage people to get laptops to do this stuff at all. But Like, any, like we did in China. Like, <laughs> they, they were actually China. getting the Lenovo's with well, the high end sell those, all the people get to you. Yeah, no, they're just going to run them for six months and sell them. It's just a joke yeah. to them. They're going to yeah. get their money back and then sell them for as brand new. Um, yeah. yeah, that's not good. You know, that's why you got to make sure your equipment's sealed when you buy it. Um, so I would just encourage, I, I, I talk about in that video, I talk about getting computers from behind the Salvation Army and for free off of mm-hmm. Facebook, right? And I talk about how to get those computers plugged in and get them working. Um, mm-hmm. But one of the things you, you, you should try to do is buy one of these new video cards that have hit the market, the, the th- 3000 series NVIDIA cards. So if you guys get your pens and papers handy, 
I'm going to tell you the cards. I'm going to tell you what order they come in too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's the 3060, the 3060 TI, the 3070, the 3070 TI, the 3080, the 3080 TI, and the 3090. Now, some of these cards are better. All these cards are great for gaming. All these cards are great for like family computers and, and making music and ed editing, ed editing videos, all that stuff. But some of these cards are what's called limited hash rate. So NVIDIA, in an effort to try and control the miners from buying all the cards, they did some software and, and hardware tricks to the cards that made them limit the hash rate when they're mined. Right. That doesn't actually affect the ROI, really. Like, you're still able to return on investment on these things really quickly. But some of the cards are more pristine than others in that they don't have LHR. So if you can get like a 3070 Founders Edition or 3070 mm -hmm. Ti Founders Edition, FE, mm -hmm. those are not hash, are limited hash rate. Those are those are those original cards that came out in January and February this year. Mm -hmm. Those cards can still be mined to their full capacity. Now, now if you're standing in line or if you're signing up on these gov on these company websites, those are the cards you're trying to get is that 3070 ti or 3070 founders edition okay founders edition that's the one you want okay. now, outside of that the 3080 ti's and the 3090s are probably your best return on investment and those you'll, you'll have more chance of buying uh the 3080 ti you know is probably like 24 2600 canadian and the 3090 mm -hmm. is going for you know over 3000 canadian so these are expensive video cards but um, most of them have returned on investment in like 30 or sorry, 61 to like 90 days uh, mm -hmm. as of like February of this year. So pretty, pretty cool when you think about that, that you can buy this thing and it'll pay itself off that quickly. These new cards. Um, so and then we're going to sell those coins here going into this parabolic run, which is even cooler. So I'm just trying to get as many coins as I can in the meantime from the mining. I'm going over tomorrow to get all the cards running at one of our farms. Um, some okay. of the cards have died fans and things. So I'm just going to go through there and make sure everything's running right now because I'm so incentivized. What? So what about like if someone wants to hold throughout that run? Uh, like would you s suggest like people just keep on holding and holding if they don't need to, if they don't want to sell? Yeah. So so if you sold last time in the run, you could have mm -hmm. sold it like, you know, $21,000 Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But if you had held it, it's now worth sixty-eight, seventy thousand uh, dollars. It's about sixty-five right now, but like yeah. at the yeah. time of this recording, yeah, we're yeah. about so sixty-five it US. It depends on your approach. Now, if you had yeah. sold it at twenty-one and bought it all back at eight or four, mm -hmm. you did pretty good. Most yeah. people aren't that sophisticated or, or don't have sophisticated strategies, or they they're too emotional to accomplish that. Certainly, I I should have bought more when it was at four grand. I bought a lot, but. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I, I should have just kept buying at five grand and six grand and seven grand and 10 grand. And here I am buying as much as I fucking can. It's 65. K. Hey, listen, I remember when it first came out, I'm like, I wonder how I can get it. And I just never looked into it. And now I'm kicking myself because I could have had a hundred dollar Bitcoin at now at could have had 65 grand, you know? Oh yeah. It's, it's crazy when you think about that stuff. But the, the thing is, don't forget how early we are. And we oh, talked about, we're not in that two week period or that 48 hour period yet. It doesn't yeah. matter how much you buy. It's just going to go ape shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that. I mean that. Like, yeah. uh, I really believe that. I personally believe that. That's how I'm investing my money. Um, yeah. So just buying it on exchange is step one. Getting mm -hmm. something like a nano ledger, a hardware wallet, is probably step two. And mm -hmm. I like the nano ledgers because they have what's called a secure enclave. And they're really easy to use. So yes. we use the Nano Ledger S. That's what we get all our clients to use, all my friends and family. That's why I buy it for everyone at Christmas. And that's a really safe, inexpensive way to hold coins yourself. Yes. And that remembers your, your master password without ever exposing that master password to the internet. So it's something mm -hmm. called cold storage. And on, the, on my Good Guy Biker YouTube channel, I have videos where we talk about how to mine and how to use those free computers or any desktop computers. Or if you go buy a new video card and put it in your computer, how to get those to mine right away for free. I talk mm -hmm. about that in that video. The next video in that in that playlist on my YouTube is about hardware wallets. And I talk exactly about how these things work. And I encourage everyone to, to, to watch that. It's a pretty good video. Um, but basically, what you're doing is you're using this hard, this USB stick as a tool to interact and send your coins without ever 
exposing the, the private information to the internet. So this is, it prevents these hackers and these viruses and all these different things from getting a hold of you. So, right. so it's, I think the smartest way to hold coins is in one of these hardware wallets. It's how I, we hold all of our coins. It's how all our businesses hold coins. I won't even give coins to people. I, I won't even help people with mm-hmm. the mining things until they get one of these hardware wallets. Cause then I can, I can be sure that you're going to have a good experience if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, get because, a because when you when you actually, I remember when you sold me my when you sold me the miner, uh, you included the the hardware wallet with it. So, you know, yeah. I, Spencer's helped me set it up, and uh, you know, we're actually in a pool. So that's another thing people were asking me, like, "Oh, do you just how, how much like you just get into your thing?" I was like, "Well, it's, I, I don't do it. I I have the miner running at home, and then uh, it goes to the pool, and then at the end of the month, you guys calculate it." Now, right now, uh, the something that a lot of people don't realize, uh, gas fees. So transferring between exchanges and the hardware wallets, sometimes they don't re- also realize, like I did, made a big mistake one time. I was transferring my uh, the, some Bitcoin to my hardware wallet and from Coinbase, and the gas fees were more than what I actually transferred in. So I actually lost money doing that which was kind of, I, I had they, no idea. Really? They let you do that. They shouldn't, they the normally, and this is one of the reasons we don't like Coinbase, right? Because they allow that to happen. Most exchanges would have given you a warning and been like, this, this is a bad transaction. It doesn't mean. Yeah, they, they didn't. No, nope, they didn't. Way. And the other thing is exchanges will always generally charge the f- the most fee, mm-hmm. the high fee, so that you your your transaction gets processed very quickly. So what I mean is, They'll always charge a try to charge you a fee that they make a little money and then mm-hmm. right and at the same which time they did. transaction which they do and at the same time your transaction gets mined within the next ten minute block right, right. they want to make sure you're in the very next block so that your transaction is mined quickly so that you're not messaging their customer service three hours later being like where the fuck's my money right right they, that's all they would deal with otherwise so exchanges suck. Right. You don't want it. Once your money's in your hardware wallet, you can set your fee. You can set a low fee and just wait till it gets mined on Sunday. Like it's right. right. Like you just you can totally adjust all that threshold exchanges and their greedy fucks. They don't they don't like that. They don't. And that's why I mine. Right. Because an Ethereum costs you what? Forty six hundred U.S. dollars to buy right now. Well, we can mine. One. Yeah. I think we're around there. Yeah. Actually, forty five. 45. Okay. Uh, you can yeah. mine an Ethereum coin for like 170 Canadian dollars, 200 Canadian dollars. It takes you a little bit of time based on the mm-hmm. amount of equipment you have. But that's the that's what you're paying in electricity to get that Ethereum. And that's fucking incredible when you think about that. You're you're making these coins for exponentially less than you could purchase them for. You're trading electricity for the coin for at the a coin. rate of like one fiftieth, one one tenth, right? It's just it's incredible. Um, so that's really cool. The other cool thing is you have these physical assets you can kind of treat like a business. Um, and then you, you've got something that is passive. So you're draining, you're, if you're looking to dollar cost average over time, mining is like the easiest way to do that. But, you know, I wouldn't necessarily encourage everyone to like go buy 10 video cards right now because we're in that uptrending bull market. Certainly yeah. get some computers going if you haven't and run those for years. But but you know what, Peter? I know you asked about the, the holding it through the cycle. I would encourage most people to be willing to sell in the next four months. I would encourage most people to have a mindset where they're willing to. If it becomes a life-changing amount of money and you know you can ride off into the sunset metaphorically, if it's a thing that will secure your family, buy your, your, your home, get out of that townhouse, if it's something that will just change everything around your life, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's worthy of considering taking advantage of that instead mm-hmm. of spending four more years in a mentality where you're trying to live under your under your means mm-hmm. in order to save. Because I we you know we've been living very inexpensively, very inexpensively, and mm-hmm. that's been an effort to uh, that's been an effort to save as much as we can here going into starting a family, right and. Uh, the housing market has just gone crazy while we've done that. So it's just like, what do we do? Do we just keep trying to, do we keep trying to get an edge or do we finally just play the stupid game? And it's just, it's, you know, hopefully Bitcoin does and all the crypto coins do what we suspect they're going to do here at the end of the year. And then I will never ever 
ever think about money ever again. You know, right. I, w- I won't have to. And we'll keep a couple Bitcoins and we'll keep, you know, 100 Ethereum and we'll keep all that shit. <laughs> we'll do it <Yeah>. forever. <laughs> but, but it just for me, that stuff won't matter anymore. And we'll mm-hmm. just be, I'll just go buy a house for cash and I'll just buy all the pristine things I think our family needs. And uh, I'll, I'll just put money aside for all the stuff, the schooling. And but that's that's like it took me four years, five years of doing this like a business to get there. Right. Mm-hmm. It was it wasn't. And it was a lot of thanks to Spencer, right? And and people like you, Peter, and, and and our all our friends and our clients that helped, and all the people to do the pool. So yeah, let's talk about the pool. So you you can solo mine, if you have like depending on the chain, like Bitcoin, you would need, you would probably need like one percent or more of the of the chain itself of all all the hashing to be a solo miner where you're just trying to guess blocks yourself. Well, so we, from also sorry to interrupt, but but from what I understand, also mining Bitcoin directly now is kind of impossible unless you have specialized equipment specialized equipment right you can't just oh, go yeah. and buy these cards anymore you you can st- you still do it with ethereum but yeah, definitely not, with, not with bitcoin no not with bitcoin you need something called the asics application specific mm-hmm. integrated equipment if you're using anything else it's going to be probably a value loss proposition in that you'll be spending more electricity than yeah. you would if you just spent the money to buy the coins so you end up with less money and less coins so and that's if you're dealing with power rates and different things of that nature, the type of equipment. So it's really important that, that people focus on that. Right. Um, so the pool mining basically is like organized number guessing. Think of it like uh, normally I would say I would guess one, two, three, four, five, six. But if Peter and I got together, it would be Hillman one, Rocco two, Hillman three. Rocco four, Hillman five, Rocco six, or rather we would split it up into work groups. So I would say, Hey, Peter, everything that's a a square root of two, I'm going to do, I'm going to guess that. And you're going to guess everything that's a square root of three. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to join up with this crew on the internet and they're all guessing the other square roots. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's cool. And now we have like a, a, a workload, a way we can all generate numbers of increasing f- sophistication in a way that organizes and that we don't step on each other's feet. Right. So we call those, we call those uh, work blocks. We call those shares, work shares. And so what you're doing is you're getting shares of the overall number guessing. And, and ho- the hope is that one of us in these huge work groups guess the right number. And mm-hmm. then based on the amount of sh- shares, the amount of work we did, mm-hmm. we, we, get, we get a percentage of that reward. And it's it's equal, right? There's no there's no dividing, there's no edge for anyone. Uh, right. The pool operators, uh, like Ethermine in this case, that's the pool we use. They mm-hmm. take a, a very small percentage. I think it's like a I think one percent or something less than that. But right. um, they they provide all this organization and number guessing for us. Now the other cool part is our work group, which Peter is a part of, which we're doing. So all our my computers and Peter's computers and all of our friends' computers, we all mine together to organize that number guessing. Um, we're doing something called minor extracted value on Ethermine. So we're doing the reorganization, we're doing the dark pool, the arbitrage stuff, we're doing some liquidity stuff, and we're sandwiching transactions and causing slippage. And so the long of the short is. Ethermine has set up this sophisticated system to do different type of arbitrage and front running and, and, and cause slippage for different types of transactions. And they're they're affecting people who, who are doing things like minting NFTs or when you're buying something on Uniswap. What they do is you kind of drain one liquidity pool and then buy up all the orders and sell it back to them at a higher price. There's all these flash arbitrage opportunities. And so yeah. by using the pool by having enough substantial capacity that we can guess those blocks before everyone else, we can reorganize those blocks while everyone's trying to guess that number. We can reorganize it to our own benefit. We can squeeze out a little more profit and then we can mine it before they do. And that's why we work in these pools because we can do this sophisticated, uh, I would call I call it shenanigans, but really it's, it's financial terrorism. And it's, but yeah. it's also how the how these technologies work. Without the miners mining these blocks from the mempool, without all this sophisticated stuff I'm talking about, there wouldn't be liquidity. You wouldn't be able to buy coins on Uniswap or these places because that's the rails that makes this stuff work. It also it also makes it more predictable. Or sorry, uh, 
it makes it less predictable, I guess you could say. So it's it's harder for people to game the system, mm-hmm. right? Because um, so it, it's so you know like arbitrage trade, where people trade country currencies back and forth, you know, in one day and they make a bunch of money. That's a lot harder to do in a sense because these robots, the, these these systems are doing that anyways. So it's yeah, harder sure. for these large central actors to come in and do do this with criminal intent. In that you and I, Peter, we're doing MEV right now. So we're mm-hmm. benefiting from all of that activity, right? right? So if they try to create a system to, to benefit them, they're going to not outcompete our system. Because right, we right, have right. an incredibly large decentralized system that's competing with them. So they're mm-hmm. not sophisticated enough or scale enough or have enough invested interest in beating us. So all those games that they used to play in those traditional markets, we get to play here. And you and I, as average consumers, get the benefit. And I guess the other idea of that is 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 the public ledger. So normally the mass surveillance, the corporate information, the data collection, your user ID, your user agent, which they attach to your browsers and your computers, all that stuff allows these companies to have huge swaths of information about you and other people. And they're able to anticipate behaviors and technologies. You hear about like Facebook and Amazon knowing these young girls are pregnant before they know they're pregnant based on their buying habits. You know, and the dad seeing these pregnancy ads on Facebook and freaking out. And then, you know, a month later finding out that the uh, the daughter's pregnant. Uh, and they just know that these pregnant women are buying very specific things on Amazon. Uh, mm. And they're able to tell, right? Like, and they have that data. That's a lot of data that they're not offering yeah. up to us, right? That information isn't for us. If I wanted to go read all of Amazon's information about how the fuck they can tell people are pregnant before those people know they're pregnant, I would love to. I would love, I would write books yeah. on that stuff. That's just one of the very interesting things they've been able to figure out, right? Facebook thinks they know when you're going to get a, a divorce three months before it happens, right? And this is pretty consistent now. Um, and I, it's just, it blows my mind. But yeah. but this public ledger, this blockchain stuff, it's for everybody. Everybody can see it. You know, Peter, Peter can go look at our address or the pool's address or his address, and he can see all the activity. He can mm-hmm. see every person that that pool has ever sent money to. He yeah. can see every single person that I've ever sent money to. He can see every time I've sent him money down to the second and how much it costs in transaction fees and how much it was at the time. That that information is all on that public ledger. So mm. when people say things like, oh, send me your Bitcoin and I'm going to double it. Well, look at their address they send you. Mm-hmm. Don't ever do that, by the way. That's a scam. Yeah, Elon, no, nobody no, else definitely. will ever do that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, yeah. but, or put it into a robot or cloud mine it or any of those other things. Those are scams, right? That's why you put your mm-hmm. coins in your own wallet. You don't give them to other people. Yeah. But the, 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 it just, it, it blows me away that people fall for that, though. Hey, eh, Peter? Like, you, you have to hold those coins yourself. But, you know, everybody falls for it, it seems like. It, everybody, it's actually, well, people, a lot of people don't know. They just they, they just go with what they see because they're like, oh, they're curious and they're like, okay, let's try it. And then they end up getting screwed over and then they never try to do it again the, the right way, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> it's amazing how many questions, like every time, perfect example, uh, a couple days ago. I was talking with a uh, streamer friend of mine on his stream. He's talking about how he's got stuff in Binance. I'm like, oh, shit. Now, here's the thing. He's based out in the Philippines. So basically, the only options they have are Binance, Coinbase, and CoinsPH. Those are basically the only three options they have. Um, I told him to check out Kraken. I don't know if Kraken will uh, deals with the, with the, with Philippine, with the Philippines, though. But, you know, every time I, I've i seen a lot of postings, oh, yeah, I'm with Binance, and I tell them, please get out of Binance. And they're like, why? Why? And just, they just, they can't believe it. They, they've fallen for, oh, the Binance coin. They, they're actually buying into the, you know, the, the, their stable coin, you know, they call, you know. There's like 21 which, operators. It's heavily centralized. They can change anything yeah. they want on that coin anytime they want. That's not a safe place mm-hmm. to leave your money. Yeah. Um, but you know what I would I would say, Peter, and I think this is really important it's for people around the world. Cryptocurrency is coming to destroy money remittance. All of this money union and money uh, cash converters and all this shit. They're 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 not Western Union. They're not going to exist anymore. Yeah. Bitcoin and these other technologies are going to defeat that. Just like mm-hmm. just like Skype and FaceTime defeated mm-hmm. long distance calling cards. 
Yep. To destroy, just decimated that. And it's not to say there's still not little old Indian ladies going to the going to the post office and buying because <laughs> that's yeah. what they're used to doing because they've been, you know, stuck. Mm-hmm. Right. But the reality is you don't have to do that anymore. You just jump on FaceTime or Skype or any of these other free technologies and you can communicate with your family overseas free as much as you want. Yep. Yeah. And and to send money to people, that fee is going to go down to very, very low, if not zero, right? And that's through these different layer technologies and these different coins that are being created. And these, it's just, it's just, it's financial technology, and it's a race to zero because everyone's competing to just get the most effective product. And there's all these these honest people trying to do benefits for the world. So let's say you're in the Philippines, as an example. Mm-hmm. What's to stop the family approach, the family and friend approach? You know. You get you you get you get your friends and family overseas to buy some of that Bitcoin for you and send it to your wallet, mm-hmm. you know. And I really do mean that. I mean, these people, these people in these other countries of the world, we don't have context for how how hardworking or how creative and ingenuitive some of these people are in the places like the Philippines. They yeah. will make it work, right? Because they have to. Yeah. And so they have this. There's 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 certain mentalities with some of the people there that. They're incredibly creative and in, 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 in they think differently than we do here. Well, we go try to buy a solution. They don't, there's not a solution they can buy. If mm-hmm. this thing came from somewhere else and it broke, they have to fix it. Right. right? We have to make it work. And they solve the problem themselves. So I think one of the ways they've done that with money and things in the past is these different family systems, right? Where these mm-hmm. families are sending, I think, I think from North America, there's mm-hmm. an average. Two point four billion dollars mm. that, that goes in money remittance to the Philippines every year, and also from uh, the Arabic countries too, because a lot of them are OFWs from Saudi, and uh, you know they a lot of them go to the Arabic comp- countries as well because they make more money outside of the country. Of course, you know? right? So it's huge sums of money, right? So these people are already using these family networks to accomplish this stuff. Mm-hmm. They just need to start accomplishing this stuff instead of using Western Union and all these other things. They need to accomplish it inside of the blockchain. Right. So, so that's what I encourage people to do is just learn more about Bitcoin and hardware wallets and how you can set up a wallet right now. They can buy hardware wallets. And, you know, normally you shouldn't buy hardware wallets from just anybody. Like mm-hmm. Peter, Peter, we, we told Peter how to check that hardware wallet to make sure it was legitimate. The first time you use them, they check. The uh, you, you you need to take the holding of it first because mm-hmm. the government can still seize it. These banks can still take it, right? So this is uh this is really important to keep in mind. So once you have that hardware wallet, the government can't really see it, right? The banks yeah. can't see it, and it's in your own control. It's in your possession. So you right. can just really send money to and from that. Yeah, yeah, and it's safe. As Coin.ph is is like not great, and mm-hmm. um, and Binance don't leave money on there. You know, and don't don't use like don't do large sums at a time. You want to kind of be be sneaky about it. Mm-hmm. Um, keep it under 10k at a time if you can. That kind of stuff. Um, make sure you have two factor authentication turned on. Never use SMS. People use text messages for their security, mm-hmm. and the problem is your phones can get what's called SIM swapped. Yep. So you want to make sure you do not use a phone number as a recovery method for your exchanges. You want to mm-hmm. use something like. Um, Something like uh, your Google Authenticator is probably the best version. So that's a free app you can download. You put that on your phone, and that uh, and and that you you scan the QR codes that those different exchanges and websites create for you. Right. They give you a time based code. And so the idea of two factor authentication, this actually comes from the military. So these hardware wallets, these these SHA two fifty six, these secure enclaves, these SMP thirty two chips, and all these different things. I did not think we were going to see average consumers using these types of technology for another 10 years. But because of the adoption of cryptocurrency, people have taken this self-sovereignty and like physical security and privacy really seriously, more than they ever have before. It's, it's blown my mind, right, how much people are, are paying attention to this stuff now. So I look at, I look at this kind of like we're, we're all 007 in a Q world. A Q is just giving us these incredible gadgets to, to allow us to do these very sophisticated things in very easy ways. We don't know how the laser pen works or, or what, why there's a parachute in the, the, the shoe or, you know, we don't care. Q has accomplished that for us and give us, given us these incredible tool, tools, you know, Q from 007, I mean. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and not not the uh, not the, the anonymous stuff. 
but and he's given it to us. We're 007, and we've got these oh. sophisticated military standard tools. And so right. as long as we learn to use them just a little bit, um, it makes us very, very safe. And that's the big difference. And you can hold most of your coins inside of something like a nano ledger, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So uh, definitely do that. Self sovereignty is the main reason this stuff works. It, it's unfuckable money. It's unfuckwithable money. Yeah, money you can't get fucked with. Yeah. So everybody should be mining. Get your mining going. Everybody should be buying. Dollar cost averaging is a good approach. But I'm also like. I'm going ape right now. I'm throwing chunks of money at Bitcoin as much as I can right now. Chunks. Yeah. And uh, I've recently sold off all my remaining bonds and stuff and just bought chunks mm. of Bitcoin. And, it, and uh, you know, so this is I kind mean, of... I, I, I've told people like, yeah, this, the dollar cost uh, averaging is like one of the best solutions. Even if it's going up or down, you're just throwing like every paycheck. Say if you get paid uh, every two weeks. Throw maybe twenty to one hundred dollars every paycheck, to whatever you can afford in there, whether it's going up or down, because eventually it's gonna it's gonna shoot up again. Oh, eventually, probably pretty quick here. And so yeah. I would just be ready to sell in the next four months and then just spend another four years accumulating. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, that's what yeah. I'm like getting ready to do. All right. Yeah. So, how about um, some other questions? What other questions have you been getting? Um, what kind of, uh, computers, uh, what, what could they, could they use like starting at home? Like was it, what would be like a bare minimum, like say if someone didn't have a lot of money and the, like the bare minimum, as far as uh, hardware that would be needed yeah. to, get, to get started. Because I know when I started the, the miner that you get, that you guys gave me about, I think it was about three, three, maybe four years now it's, it's been, uh, the, the two cards that were, that came with it, um, and by the way, everything was everything was uh, it was uh, I believe it was used, right? If, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think, I think you might have bought a used rig. I'm not sure what yeah. cards were they. Yeah. The 1050 um, The uh, I got them right here. Hold on. Uh, what the hell did I do? Yeah, I think you had bought one, one of our friends. Yeah, they were they were like four gig cards. There were two four gig cards. Um, they weren't. They I I don't even know if they're even usable anymore. I swapped oh, it out are. for twenty for twenty yeah, for twenty six. You want to have those running on. Uh, you want to have those running on. If you still have those cards, you definitely want to run those cards on like Ravencoin or something. Like absolutely. that's what I was thinking about doing. Yeah, we were. T- I was talking to Spencer about that. But like, what would be like a minimum? Like, th- could any motherboard do uh, any? Uh, as as far as a processor, what would be like a minimum as a processor? Like stuff like that. What, so there, what there would be a minimum to get started? Minimums. It- you might not be profitable. There's a really good website called whattomine.com and that'll let mm-hmm. you look at all the different video cards and it'll tell you, you could put your power per kilowatt hour in there, which here in Canada mm-hmm. is like 14 cents Canadian. And it right. could be anywhere from like 26 cents American all the way down to like a few cents. Mm-hmm. So, so that's cool. Um, I would use whattomine.com. But like mm-hmm. if your cards, if your video card is under four gigabytes of memory, you'd have to mine something else other than Ethereum. And there's there's right. like Flux and there's all these other things you can mine. Yeah. Uh, if your card has more than four gigabytes, it definitely should be mining Ethereum, right? Mm-hmm. Um, T-Rex Miner is what I would use. It's free. Mm-hmm. And on any in any processor, really, I would use XM Rig. XM Rig. Mm-hmm. And so that you use on the process of their computer and that lets you mine. And that, that'll just set a threshold to whatever kind of computer it is. Uh, well, it, what, say if I had like an old P4, that, that would be no good, right? I mean, that, that's like just sitting there. That's just got to go. So well, it's just collecting dust. Well, uh, except do, that you could run those two other cards in it and get it going on Raven. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, so, it, 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 does it still have the time 16 video card slots? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Does it have uh, like PCI Express so that you could plug a riser with a video card in it? You know what the risers are, right, Peter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does uh, it have I don't think it to do the risers, but I think it, it's got at least one slot that we, you know, I can put yeah. one of them. Well, if it's, got, if it's got one times four, if it's got one times 16 slot, you can stick a video mm-hmm. card in there. And mm-hmm. if it's got one, one of the four or eight slots for the, mm-hmm. which should have at least one of those, you can plug a second card in through a riser. Through, mm-hmm. through, because the risers are USB to the four times, so those right. small ones, and you can plug that riser into a sixteen slot. You mm-hmm. can plug that into an eight slot or a four slot. A lot of people don't know that. Mm-hmm. You just can't plug them into PCI. It has to be PCI Express, the newer ones. Right, 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 right. right, right. But that's easy. We can help you. You can just look up on the internet what the difference between PCI and PCI Express is. They'll show mm-hmm. you pictures of them. Uh, but you can plug that into you can, and that's how people are plugging like six, seven, eight video cards into like old normal computers. You yeah. can even get these adapters 
where it's a USB adapter and it it, it plugs into that PSI or P- PCI Express yeah. slot and turns it into four plugs, so you can run four cards off of it. Now the new generation cards that's going to be really difficult to do. You're also mm-hmm. limited by the bandwidth on the motherboard, the throughput, the laneways, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you'll easily get two, but sometimes you won't won't get three or four working. Sometimes right. it's a power thing, so you'll have to actually plug power into that adapter. Right. So it has five volts or twelve volts or something, so it can continue to to power all those video cards. Um, something, but there's a lot of again great information about just like hodgepodging old computers together, or literally mm-hmm. just go to any of our videos from 2017 on Instagram or on Facebook or on YouTube, mm-hmm. and that you'll see us doing exactly that stuff. Just right. all found and free and recycled hardware, and just mm-hmm. getting it making money like right away. Yeah. Um, with adapters and the difficulty is the power supplies. The new video cards will definitely draw way too much power, way too much power right? for those yeah. old motherboards. So it's going to become kind of a hazard, right? Cause it'll just, it'll toast those old motherboards, but the, yeah. anything that's six, seven years old should have no problem running. These cards should have no problem running these video cards. And, and you should definitely, if you've got an extra tower around and cards that aren't turned on, you should definitely get that together. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So yeah, any any computer works. Um, stay away from things like nice hash. This is really really bad. People yeah, people yeah. people use these one click miners instead of learning how this stuff works, and they end up getting really screwed because of that. So stay away from one click miners. Uh, nice hash and 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 miner gate and all those things are really really bad. They give you bad rates. They make your computer do bad things. They steal your personal mm-hmm. information. Not good. Um, again, on my channel, Good Guy Biker on YouTube, I've got a video that will explain how anybody can mine on any computer. Just really easy. Is mining cryptocurrency at home still profitable in 2021? Watch that video. I show you step by step. You, you basically download a program. Mm. You open the file. And then you change two things in there. You put your wallet address in there. And you change the pool to your regional one. So whatever your pool you're using. And that's it. You're done. That's it. Two two things. You have to enter your personal wallet, which you get out of that hardware wallet, or you can get you can download an app on your phone and get it. Yeah, man. This is it's so easy to do better than those mm-hmm. one clicks. I have no respect for anyone that uses that shit. I make fun of them on Facebook. I I, I know. I, <laughs> imagine being like, I'm in the bleeding edge tech space. <laughs> this is as far as I got. And you're just like, I got the level one. I, I've, I've tagged you a couple of times just, on stuff like that. I've tagged yeah. you. I'm like, Alex, explain to this guy, please. I, it's, I, it's, it's stressful because the information about the criminal history and like one of the guys just got put in jail again. One of the guys actively just this year was arrested for this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it's so it's so bad. These guys are so bad. These are bad people. And mm-hmm. these people are just like, whatever. It's easy. I'm on level one. And it's just mm-hmm. like, bro, you're fl- flying a flag of stupidity. These people are like, I don't care nice hash good and i'm like bro you are like one of those people that like won't be allowed at conferences like people will just be like oh there's that guy who has really bad perspectives and never learned how anything works and i mean like do not do that and if you're using nice hash right now fucking stop there's no excuses for it i literally i've just told you how to watch a video that's free that will tell Mm -hmm. you for free how to do this stuff for free and make Mm -hmm. more money in a much safer way more mm-hmm. more money. You're gonna make more money by using the free programs. I just uh, it makes Peter it makes me so mad because the 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 thing people get fucked in the spaces, they can't keep their coins safe. Like everyone's yeah. losing their MetaMask coins right now. If you guys have coins in MetaMask, get them the fuck out. You can put your MetaMask coins in a hardware wallet. You send those MetaMask, those Ethereum tokens, to your Ethereum address. But like, mm-hmm. don't do that if you don't know what you're doing. Message someone like Peter or myself, or get get some paid help. If you like, if you want to learn how to use a hardware wallet, talk to Peter. You know, mm-hmm. send him 150 bucks. He'll spend an hour with you showing you how the hardware wallet works, and he'll yeah. literally teach you all the things that he's learned and all these in you know in the last 12 months, 24 months, how you know 36 months, everything he's learned, he can crunch that down in like an hour and a half for you and <laughs> just you can avoid all but, those uh, if not i you know if i don't know then i'll just add, i'll get in contact with you yeah, just, um but i mean that like go seek out these people like peter that have experience that he's mining 
He's doing this game and stuff. He's mining. He's got the hardware wallet stuff figured out. He's helping people get coins in other countries. Like, this is... Peter's a wizard if he's pitching himself as one or not. And you got to, if you're getting into this space, what you need to do is get help from smart people who are good, people who are not going to screw you, people who have good hearts, people who have good information, people who have been around good teachers, right? People who have become good teachers. And if you're getting good help right away, even for a little bit of money, it's going to avoid all the scams and all the loss and all the mistakes and not in. So every one of those will cost you thousands of dollars, right? So I strongly encourage everyone to buy a hardware wallet, even if you have 50 bucks or any cryptocurrency, because those small amounts of cryptocurrency turn into large amounts so quick. And secondly, educate yourself or, or, or pay people to help you get educated with those white glove services. It's so important. You can learn so much so quickly from some of these people that have spent years in this space. And, you know, yeah. they'll help you for free, but just offer them dinner, shoot them some cash, and you'll be surprised how much more you get out of them, right? Because everybody yeah. has time, family, people, people got to work. Um, and it's definitely going to be worthy to, to you people to do that. So keep that in yeah. mind. Definitely seek out help and seek out education. Yeah. All right. I mean, uh, that pretty much covers it. Uh, any other last minute uh, thoughts? Anything that yes. might come to mind? So, like, be careful about this NFT stuff and a lot of these other crypto coins right now. There's a bit of an affinity scam going on where they're positioning these things to look secure and look safe, and they're not. There's also NFTs that are currently draining people's wallets. So, when you interact mm -hmm. with those coins on OpenSea, for example, those, those NFTs, sorry, they take all of your liquidity. So you just want to be really careful about that. Okay, since you brought that up, there is a huge game right now in mostly the Philippines that I see, Axie Infinity. Yeah, and it's doing what, really well. Oh my it's god, it's doing really well. Um, is like what thousand. is your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? Because I, I've asked people have asked me, oh, should I get into it? Well, I looked at, I looked looked into it. Those little axes, those little, they're like digital Pokemon. Last I saw, like a, two months ago, they were like just three hundred dollars worth of Ethereum just to get one. So, so what? So, so no, I wouldn't buy them. Mm. If you enjoy playing video games, it's totally a thing you can enjoy, and so you can play a game and make a little extra money doing it. Totally think it's cool. But what's happened, Peter, is we're a little late in that process. Mm. You know, so to 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 break it down, Rocco. Uh, there's people that are hiring people in the Philippines to do this as work. Yes. So a lot of these, a lot of these remote managers and remote assistants and these different, different things that we hire people from the Philippines for yes. really hardworking, totally set up your Google calendars and everything for you. Like they're amazing to have on your team. Um, mm -hmm. They're now being hired by individuals uh, like myself or yourself to play these games and bring mm -hmm. these tokens back to that individual. So yeah. the difficulty of accomplishing earning the stuff and the marketplace itself is heavily diluted and there's large players that are now kind of gaming it, gaming mm -hmm. the system, right? So as an individual, I would just do it as a hobby. I don't think that's a good place to invest. But earlier this year, you made a thousand percent return on that coin. So yeah. anyone who was investing or was playing it early before the system kind of got it's diluted down by the Satur saturated, yeah. Gold farmers, saturated. Thank you. Saturated is the right word. Yeah. Um, there's a ton of opportunity, and there's going to be a lot of gaming that comes out going forward. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call some companies out here: IGG, Sky Union, and all these crazy Chinese companies that are money mm -hmm. laundering and antitrust lawsuits and da 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 da. da. They have <laughs> money problems. Okay, so uh -huh. IGG. Peter knows IGG. P Peter was working for a company with me that worked for IGG. That's how we learned about some of this stuff. Rest in peace, Pocket Live. There we RIP go. Pocket Live and all the other ones they've done. Um, so the the point is, these companies have money problems in China. Their money problem is they make too much fucking money off these mm -hmm. mobile games. They're making some something like IGG is making like thirty million dollars a month last mm -hmm. year, on average. $32 million a month from like Candy Crush and, and, and Crash Beach and like, you know, so like time crystals and, and cookie tokens and, and, mm -hmm. and berry gems. You know, people are buying these things to basically yeah. save time in these games. And uh, they're making like millions of dollars. But there's like actual like a, a limit on how much money an individual is allowed to leave China with. Like I think it's 50000 mm -hmm. is a lifetime mm -hmm. limit of how much money you can leave China with. I just there's all these crazy things, right? 
mm-hmm. and uh, it makes it really difficult. So what these companies are using is these games and these companies like Pocket Live <laughs> as a mm-hmm. way to get money out of the country. Yeah. And so they hire a bunch of guys like Peter and I, but they might hire a bunch of fake people too. And this is all speculative. I'm not saying that they, this particular company or these companies are doing that, but they you know, yeah. nudge. Um, so if you, so I think what's about to happen is that whole shenanigans, that whole getting money out of China game, that whole, mm-hmm. that whole wishy washy money, money going to the laundromat kind of stuff, mm. I think is going to enter the, the, the blockchain space. So I think a lot of these mobile apps are, and it's not going to be pristine. These aren't going to be real things. It's not going to be decentralized. These coins, these tokens, these, it's going to be some company on a server in China, right? That's who's holding your coin. And if they turn off the computer, your coins, are, you can't even use them. So yeah. keep that in mind. It's like a Starbucks token. You can only use them at Starbucks, yeah. right? You can't go to I, 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 I think the tokens people. that are being used for Axie are, are called SLP, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yes, something, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity to just like milk that space to play. Yeah, I know a lot of people have actually pulled themselves out of some shit situations just by playing Axie and and you know winning and getting better at it. Oh, for which sure, is great. For sure. Which is great. Oh, I, more more power to them. Uh, unfortunately, now the Philippine government's taking notice and they want oh, their cut. This is heavy money laundering and money's yeah. fleeing the country, and you guys just got to be careful with this stuff. Yeah. So, so I think GameFi is coming. I think that's the next kind of scam. Right now, I think mm-hmm. NFTs are kind of the scam. In 2017, mm-hmm. it was these initial coin offerings. It was like, give us money for our company launch. And then all those mm-hmm. companies disappeared. Something like yeah. 98% of them were just like, just took people's money. People never got a return. Yeah. Uh, I think right now, like the NFT stuff is that. Mm-hmm. And I think, in, in the DeFi as well, the decentralized finance stuff is really sketchy. And mm-hmm. I think after kind of this bubble here in the next six months, I think the next one is GameFi. And I think in in 2021, 22, it's going to represent some real big opportunity, mm-hmm. right? Because we're going to be front-running the, the consumer base, front-running the activity. We'll be using these things when they first get launched in these bear markets. Right. And then when the bull market takes over, the consumers hit these apps, hit these games, buy these tokens, do these things. So keep that in mind, folks. I think... I think GameFi is going to be really profitable just to play, like like Peter's talking about, really mm-hmm. profitable again. Like it was a year ago, I think it's going to be really profitable again in, a year from now. Um, keep that in mind. If you're into playing video games and getting paid, there's a ton of opportunity. ZBD yeah. is pretty cool. You can actually play Counter-Strike and get Bitcoin while you're doing it, and they just give mm-hmm. you Bitcoin. It's free. They, it's all subsidized. So like, how fucking cool is that? How cool is that? Yeah. Last thing, um, digitized currency uh, as far as like uh, fiat turning digital. Perfect example, China has, has started to uh, put out their digital yu- yuan, I think it's called, their different currency is called yuan or something like that. Um, so basically they're going towards that, trying to like uh, basically phase or keep Bitcoin out of, you know, their government, their circulation, whatever, because they, you know, they had a big ban on it and uh, on mining over there. So they're, they're pretty much one of the world leaders of actually uh, having digital payments uh, with WeChat and Al- Al- Alipay, whatever, you know. So now they have their, their currency digital or they're ex- experimenting with it. What's, what's your, what's your um, thoughts on that? And as far as Canada and the U S following suit with that, uh, I, like, do you think that's going to be something that's going to be happening really soon? And cause we are, we already have pay uh, services like PayPal and stuff like that. So how, how viable are things like this? So it's, it's inevitable in a lot yeah. of countries. And it's 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 a relation of having to increase the velocity mm-hmm. of the money creation. They can't print money fast enough to get us out of the inflation and these you know there's tr- trillions and trillions of dollars of world debt. Mm-hmm. And there's just it, w- these things can't be fixed now. We're we're in a moment now where we've gone too far. Mm-hmm. So in their mind, the way of correcting this is through 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 inflation is is but by keeping that interest rate down. So mm-hmm. the only way to really accomplish a lot of these mechanisms is just by increasing the velocity, uh, making it easier to just make money and give money, right? To, and, and using that for infrastructure, using that for utility, using that to build out 
cities and neighborhoods and build out the fix the things that are wrong, which will allow those areas to thrive once the consumer market comes back. Right. So while everything gets really scary here, what they'll do is they'll invest into train lines and they'll invest in the subways and, and they'll upgrade the hydro lines and they'll make the they'll subsidize the Internet companies to put new fiber optic up and they'll try to make everything better so that when people come back, everything's everything has more room to grow. Mm -hmm. They're going to fix a lot of these problems. And we've seen that heavily in China, right, mm -hmm. through the velocity of money printing. Um, so I think the digital currencies are going to be the same. And I think that the U.S. currency isn't going away necessarily. Mm -hmm. I just think it's going to be used digitally in a way that allows them to give it easier to people and make it make it faster, right? Mm -hmm. add, just add a zero. They're just going to hit enter. And that changes the whole thing. And um, the idea of owning assets will likely be subsidized. You'll go subsidize your jet ski. You'll subsidize mm -hmm. the massage therapy. You'll subsidize your gym membership. Everything will be subsidized by the government because mm -hmm. owning things will be really difficult when they're just adding zeros to the money supply. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think, I, think, I think the third world countries and emerging countries got us beat. They're far more used oh, to yeah. phones for money and, and transferring money in this way and having digital. They were using the QR codes 10 years before we were here. Like we're really behind on this stuff, right? Really, we're really slow. But they yeah, kind of skipped yeah. a lot of this infrastructure. They didn't get credit cards. They didn't have dial up. They didn't have coax cable internet. They went right to cellular internet. They went right to Wi Fi. Uh, they, they they didn't they 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 didn't never had copper. They went right to fiber optic, right? Like they mm -hmm skip a lot of the stuff that we we're still dealing with here in Canada and America, these 35 year old systems that are falling apart in front of us, this crumbling infrastructure. Yeah. You know? A perfect and, example. The Philippines has G cash. Uh, you can transfer money in instantly. Uh, they have pay Maya, the banks, the banks, all you got to do if you want to pay somebody um, to scan the QR code and it goes bam, just like that here yeah. in the, here in the U S they you can, kind of do that now with a, a service called zell uh but you got to get their either their email or phone number and sometimes people don't want to give that information versus a qr code that's that's just uh you know it's it's still a little antiquated but we're starting to catch up but with services like paypal too paypal um it's it's not what it used to be i don't think i think paypal now has just gotten a little bit more a little bit more paypal expensive mom. Yeah, fuck PayPal. Fuck PayPal, yeah. PayPal Mafia. They took money from me. We had to take them to court. We won twice. Uh, they mm -hmm. take money from people all the time. Fuck PayPal. Fuck mm -hmm. PayPal. I didn't even use StockX where I just bought my mask from. Mm -hmm. I didn't even use Stock because I have ton. You know, I got tons of sneakers and all this cool clothing yeah. and stuff I resell. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I only, only could do that because I had all this money from Bitcoin. I was able to buy like $300,000 worth of Supreme and sneakers. Yeah, and I saw that. Yeah. More money, right? Which mm -hmm. is even cooler. And now I got all these free shoes and more money than I started with. It's crazy. Mm. It's great. Assets are crazy right now. Everything's going up in value. But I would only use this website when I could direct deposit to my bank. I wouldn't. I refuse mm. to use it with PayPal. I won't use eBay anymore, right, for that same mm. reason. Right. I Fuck PayPal. They're not a good company. There's better ways to do it. It's PayPal represents what PayPal is and what, what cash converters and Western Union and, and, and all those other money services are. Mm. What those represent to us today is the same thing that long distance cards represented to Skype and FaceTime when they first came out. Right. If you're still using that stuff, you're, you, you haven't learned. You got to stop. Mm -hmm. there's, there, there's far more effective ways to do this stuff. You're living in the 90s. Wake the fuck up. Stop yeah. using PayPal. Stop using Western Union. Stop mm -hmm. using long distance calling cards. Stop yeah. it. You don't need <laughs> to do that anymore. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's it. That's pretty much it then. Well, I'm excited. Right. Like we're, we're at the end of that four year cycle. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in an uptrending bear market. We're, we're hitting new all time highs like every week, sometimes days in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's about to get rich. Everybody's about to feel smart. Everybody is getting lucky. Uh, everybody's hitting double zero. I don't even know. It's just this is such a cool part of time of the cycle. We've been trudging and working hard and accumulating value. You know, Peter's been mining. We've been mining slowly over time. We've been collecting those coins and we're waiting for this moment. So if you're not in, consider getting in. If you guys need some help, reach out to Peter. 
if you know Peter, I know a lot of you people from overseas or from from international places as well. Peter can definitely help you, or Peter and I can definitely get you set up. We'll both get on a call together with you. Yeah. Let's let's get you guys in, figure this out, um, and we'll make sure that you know how to keep it safe so you don't have any of those bad experiences, right? Um, please, guys, if you haven't got off zero, do so. Check out those Nano Ledger hardware wallets. Go watch those videos on my YouTube. Get your big brain going. And, uh, you know, if you have any reservations, let me know and I'll get you some free Bitcoin. I'll get you in yeah. there. Okay, folks, I will get you started. I mean that. Okay. My name is Alex. This is I'm the good guy biker. This is this is Mr. Rocco. Simply Rocco. Peter, <laughs> Peter, the man himself, one of my top fans, top contri contributors and one of the, my favorite people that I used to have to play games with on these live streaming apps. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a father like me. He's he's just trying to trying to earn a living. He's trying to get all this stuff figured out like everybody else. So, you know, we're all here in the same space together. We're all mm -hmm. still really early. This stuff is going to continue to change. So, like, if you ever feel like you're not an expert, that's okay because it's different than it was last week. <laughs> it's going to keep changing. Yeah, or um, yesterday, you know. Like, yeah, or yesterday. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Or yesterday. So, so uh, you know, just... Just hopefully, Peter, we can get together again and talk about if you guys have more questions about cryptocurrency or blockchain or mining or buying or specific stuff. Shoot Peter a message on his social media. What, what's mm -hmm. the best way for people to get a hold of you for questions? Um, Facebook, uh, Facebook and Twitter, Simply Rocco mm -hmm. on Facebook and also Twitter at Simply Rocco. I'm on Instagram also, of course. You know, I'm all over the place, you know. Yeah. So why don't you? Why don't you why don't you post the video when this goes live on your Twitter and we'll all reply to on simply Rocco on Twitter and we'll all reply with our questions there and then we'll get back together and we'll do this again. Yeah, of course. Yep. You got it.